Hi there, I'm Stephen Perry. I'm in my Backroads Press printmaking studio in Wichita, Kansas. I've been doing a two-dimensional mixed media printmaking process I call photopolymer relief print with watercolor. This video will take you through that process as I work on a print edition that will be the 2014 festival print for the Smoky Hill River Festival in Salina, Kansas. The festival print is an edition of 250 original prints that each year is done by a selected artist and then the prints are given as a thank you gift to the major donors of the festival. Through this video I will document my steps in the print process as I work on the print over the next eight weeks. If you're ready let's get started. Here are the steps in the mixed media photopolymer relief print process. Number one Create an original ink drawing in a woodblock type style. Number two, prepare the photopolymer relief plate from that drawing. Number three, printing of the relief prints on an etching press using black ink. And number four, painting of each individual print in the addition with watercolor. The first step in any printmaking process is the concept. Here I've roughed out a pencil sketch of the idea for the print I'm going to do. Uh, the concept is a autumn cottonwood along the Smoky Hill River. In this step I've taken frosted mylar, laid it over the concept sketch, and laid in the basic blacks of the tree, the riverbanks, and the hills in the background. From here I'll take this image scan it and bring it into Photoshop. Here I've taken the scanned image, reversed the blacks and whites, printed the image out, and have started working in the cloud formations and the sky elements. Here's the image back as a positive. The next step will be to start working some whites back into the tree and into the foliage in the in the riverbank. Here I've scanned and reversed the blacks and whites again so I can go in and work the uh, reflections and the water lines. Now the image is getting close to being complete but I'm needing some detail in the foreground and so I'll do a separate drawing for those elements. Here's the first pass at the foreground elements, which include sunflowers and grass foliage. I'll take this drawing, scan it, and start working on it. Here I've gotten to the final inking of the foreground elements. What I'll do with this is scan it, and through the magic of Photoshop, bring it into the corner of the final artwork. Well, I've worked on the artwork for about three days now, but I'm satisfied with it, so it's time to start preparing the plate for printing. The photopolymer plate exposure unit I use is a homemade light box. It uses six poster black lights that I purchased from Walmart. Those black lights produce ultraviolet light which is needed to expose the photopolymer plates. The exposure times can be determined by experimentation with the plates. This is a plate from a previous print. but Basically the photopolymer plate is a thin metal plate that has a coating of light sensitive polymer on it. The process is you lay an image over the plate, you expose it to ultraviolet light, and then where the light goes through the clear parts it hardens the polymer into a plastic where the light is blocked by the image the polymer stays water soluble you then take the plate and place it in a water bath with a soft brush and wash away the parts that aren't exposed to expose the plate I've taken the completed artwork brought it into Photoshop, reversed the blacks and whites then printed it on clear acetate with my inkjet printer. This will then be used as the negative for exposing the plate. I then take the unexposed photopolymer plate, lay it on the bed, 
lay my image over the top of it with the printed side down and sandwich it with a piece of glass which is then clamped onto the board. The board is then placed in the exposure unit and the unit is turned on. I'll expose the plate for approximately four minutes. I've turned off the surrounding lights. You can see the ultraviolet light glow on the plate in the exposure unit. Once the exposure of the plate is complete, take the glass off, remove the image from the plate. You might be able to see some of the image showing on the plate through the exposure. After exposure, the plate must be washed out in a water bath. I use a cookie sheet that has a self-adhesive magnetic sheet on the bottom of it that will hold the plate down. Use lukewarm water. Place the sheet in the water bath. Let it sit a little while and then start washing it out with a soft brush. I use a mushroom brush. This process will take about five minutes. We're getting close to being done with the washout. You're starting to see differences in color between the exposed and unexposed parts where the plate at the background is starting to show through. The washout is complete when all of the unexposed parts of the polymer have been washed away and you can see the plate at the base showing through completely. Once that's done, remove the plate from the water bath and dry it off. Here's the finished plate ready to be prepped for printing. This is the plate after hardening in the light box for about five minutes and trimming with a paper cutter down as close to the image as possible. Now the photopolymer plates are printed just like linoleum block plates. The ink I use is graphic chemical antiquarian black which is a oil base ink. I'll lay a little bit out on my inking sheet. And begin to roll it out into a very thin layer of ink. You don't want to use too much ink on the brayer because it starts to fill in small details of the plate. Once you have ink on the brayer, start rolling it onto the plate very lightly. The photopolymer plates don't have a lot of depth in them so that the uh, roller needs to go lightly over the top. Now I have the press set for the pressure that I've determined ahead of time for the printing of the plates. I take the ink plate center it on the bed of the press 
take my pre-torn down printing paper lay it over the plate I use a plexiglass sheet over the top of the paper to keep the press from pressing down into the indentations of the plate <coughs> Lay the blankets over the plate and run it through the press. I've run the bed through the press. I removed the blankets, I removed the plexiglass sheet. carefully peel back the paper and there we have our print. Now these steps will be repeated for each print in the edition. Typically I try to keep my editions under a hundred but in this case it will be 250 which will involve several printing days. One additional step I go through after printing and before painting my prints is to place my personal chop mark on the print. What I use is a leather stamp that I've had made with my personal logo on it. I've dampened the prints and I'll stamp the logo into a location under the signature and where it'll be below the mat. Each of these prints is done that way Basically, that assures the buyer that these prints were done by me in my studio. The last step in the process is painting of the prints with watercolor. Here I'm adding a light cerulean blue to the sky and the river. I'll do this on 50 prints before I move on to the next color. In total this print edition will have 11 different colors on it. And the next few frames of the video will show you the progression of the colors as I move to a final print. And here is the print with all 11 color steps completed. Now that the printing and painting is all complete, the only thing left to do is sign and number the prints. As you can see from this video, each print in the edition of 250 is a true original print. Well that concludes this video. I hope this will give you more appreciation of the processes involved in the creation of an edition of photopolymer relief prints with watercolor. This is only one of many different printmaking processes. It's a craft that's as diverse as each individual artist. Well, thank you for watching, and please support your local artists.